Pedro Shire Limited Broadcasting Megacorp. We'll start with the unimportant notice. This is beneficially announced to the viewing public according to the Inefficiency Act, Part 2, Clause 11, as defined by the Ministry of Internets. Why are you wasting valuable time reading this? It's quite astonishing that you've gotten this far. You may now return to your dreary routine. The unimportant notice has ended. So, before we were interrupted, I was about to tell you about the production that the servants did last Halloween here for us. They performed the most wonderful play, and it was called the Duchy Chainsaw Massacre. And it starred Mims. Uh, he played the bad guy, Old Tartan Face. And he had a uh, hacksaw. And he was running around chopping people up with this hacksaw. Should, well, I don't know why they called it chainsaw, but uh, I guess at the last minute they couldn't find the chainsaw, so they substituted the hacksaw instead. But it worked just as well. It just took a lot longer. At any rate, uh, it was really astonishing how much Mims resembled the Duke when he was playing this crazed, maniacal killer. Uh, the Duke thought it was hilarious. He just rolled around laughing so hard he had the best time. And he was really, really having a, an enjoyable holiday. And I'm just hoping that this year's production is just as good as last year's. And I have faith in my staff. I have faith in my staff that they will do something equally good uh, although I've been trying to find out the name of this year's production. And I do believe this sta the household staff has been messing with me because I've been getting all sorts of ridiculous answers. So, you know, The Exorcism of the Duchess uh, is one possible title. I just can't imagine how that would go. I don't really want to be the star. I prefer when they do their parodies of, of horror films, I prefer if they put the Duke as the bad guy. It's, he thinks it's funny. I think it's funny too, but when I'm the bad guy, it's like, oh dear, that's way too, that's way too real, way too close to who the Duchess really is. She's way too close to being a villain already. I don't think it's fair to pick on her like that. You wouldn't believe the amount of judgment I get for the things I say. I really don't understand. I don't think I say anything that outrageous. I really don't. But all the time people are quite appalled by the things I say. <laughs> The Duchess Show, starring the Duchess of Petrochild. The Duchess Show is filmed before a well-behaved studio audience. Unleash the hounds. Admiral's out at sea right now. Then from Mims and the Twinning Basket, time to feed the baby hippo. You know, the Duke really objects to the hounds pissing around the cats, and I really can't stand listening to any more of his whinging. So, this Halloween, we have some new decorations. We've added to our skeleton collection. I'm quite fond of skeletons and black candles. You know, you just can't find them in the shops locally. It's quite difficult to find them. And we're running low on black candles. So if anyone has a source for black candles, type it in the comments beneath the video. It would be very, very helpful. Although there's always Amazon. I know about that. But if you know of any shops inside the duchy. So tonight we're all dressing up. Uh, my costume this year, I'm going to be the pre-Raphaelite model and artist uh, Elizabeth Siddle, 
who was married to the very, very scandalous artist and poet Dante Rossetti. And here's the story of them. It's quite appropriate for Halloween. Uh, Lizzie had consumption, which today we would call tuberculosis. And she was also addicted to laudanum. Anyway, they had a baby, a baby girl, and the baby girl died. And then Lizzie afterwards pined away and died of a laudanum overdose. And Dante Rossetti had written all these beautiful, beautiful poems. And when they buried Lizzie, he put the poems in the casket and buried his life's work with her. Well, several years later, he had some regrets about that. So he went with his pal, whose name I can't remember, but he always hung out with all those pre-racketites. Anyway, they went into the churchyard at night and dug up Lizzie's grave and stole the poems of her truth. It was said that Lizzie was just as beautiful as she was the day they buried her, but I highly doubt it. These were Victorian standards of burial, so I don't think so. At any rate, I thought that was a reasonably creepy real-life story to tell you, and that's why I'm dressing up as Lizzie Siddle, and uh, no one is really dressing up as Dante Rossetti, because, well, no one wants to really be Dante Rossetti. Uh, the Duke is dressing up as his favorite rugby player, and it's the end of rugby season, so we must humor the Duke, and he's his favorite rugby player, and I can't remember his name, Max something... I believe. Big fellow. Big fellow. Like something. At any rate, the Duke is now getting warmed up and ready for fencing season. Well, uh, first there's hunting. He's going to do some shooting and then he is going to do some hunting with me because I hunt. And then after that we have to get ready for fencing season. And sometimes I spar with the Duke a little bit. Not much, but... It's fun to do sometimes, and it's an activity we can do together. Although he's quite a bit bigger than me, so usually he wins. His arms are longer. It's quite regrettable. The only way I could possibly win would be to break all the rules and fight dirty. And I just can't do that to the Duke. He's a very, very decent fellow to be married to. Even if we do have to spar at fencing together, which most married couples do not participate. Things like that. That's why we have such a success for the marriage, I think. At any rate, we have more preparations for Halloween. I have one jack lantern to carve. Uh, I usually reserve one. Uh, my favorite pumpkin, I look at them all. We have a very excellent pumpkin patch here in the duchy. So I pick out my favorite pumpkin and set it aside. And then I carve it right before Halloween, right before we start our trick or treat. I love crafting. And uh, I like redecorating the entire castle for Halloween. I find it very enjoyable. I always just stand around and tell the servants, put black stuff over there and some more black stuff over there. And uh, rather a large pile of skulls over there with some of the little skeletons all around. Yes, that's perfect. And that's exactly how we decorate for Halloween. You should try it at home. It's very easy. And uh, I think you'll be very pleased with the effects you get from that sort of treatment. Uh, it always helps to have a large supply of Halloween decorations on hand. So basically, if you'll pace yourself throughout the year, making different crafts for Halloween during each month, then you have a rather spectacular uh, array of things to add. This year, I did a couple of my dolls. I like to buy old, crappy-looking dolls, used dolls. And then I turn them into something scary. I mean, sometimes these dolls are already quite scary by themselves. But then I make them worse. I use paint and other special effects. I have a doll now that I am going to work on. I wanted to get ready for this Halloween, but it wasn't possible due to my illness, but uh, she's going to be the maggot doll, and I'm going to use a ramen noodles, and they're going to come out of her head, and they're going to be all over her face, and I'm going to use uh, those uh, sushi things, the seaweed sheet. I'm going to stick some of those on her so she looks all gross and rotten and covered with maggots, and she's going to look uh, fabulous and be an excellent Halloween decoration. She was quite the ugliest thing I've ever seen when I first bought her. 
uh, ugly wig and this ugly face and just uh, yeah. and she still has the hunchback. I'm going to leave the hunchback as it is, but she had a hunchback when I bought her. But the woman at the second hand store called me a monster. If you can imagine me. This is why I say I don't like being the villain. Because I've been called a monster before. But uh, apparently there were dolls that were in her family. Some of these dolls belonged to her mother. So when I went back to the secondhand store two years later, I realized she had forgotten exactly what I was doing with the dolls. Because I bought one. And she said, oh, this came right from my mother's bedroom. I think this sat on the dresser in her room. And I was like, oh... So the next time I went in and bought some more ugly dolls, I ran into her. And I walked up to her and I said, You know, that last doll I bought to belong to your mother. I've been working on her, restoring her. And uh, you wouldn't recognize her now. She's all cleaned up and looking quite festive. And she responded enthusiastically. So she's forgotten that I'm a monster, so now when I come in and buy dolls, she'll forget what I'm doing to them and thinks that I'm being nice. But in the end, they have a home where they are cherished and valued once a year and packed away in a box where they belong the rest of the year because dolls, quite frankly, are creepy and I never liked playing with them as a child. So I do get a bit of a thrill of turning them into monsters at Halloween because, quite frankly, they're hideous and they deserve I would rather, when I was a child, I played with little toy horses. They weren't frightening at all. You didn't have to worry about them coming to life. In fact, I thought, well, wouldn't it be fun if they could come to life and gallop around my bedroom? But the thought of the doll coming to life and walking around was not fun. I didn't like having them in my room. So that's why I've done what I've done with the dolls. They look like monsters and they're packed away for 12 months. No, 10 and a half months. We don't even look at them. And then when people come over and go, ooh, those dolls, and I say, yes, I know. You should have seen them before I fixed them. They're absolutely hideous. The Duchess Show is brought to you by the United Biscuit Company, the makers of Twiglet, and Classic Tipton Sales, and Epona Bloodstock Agency. Well, oh yes. I do have a project for next year. Uh, as I said during the Great Expectations book review, I found Miss Hamshan's cake terrifying. And next year I'm going to make a cake that would appear on the dining room table. It would be an actual gross cake with bugs and stuff. And oh, By the way, it's crooked. It'll be a fake cake with fake bugs and fake spider webs, but it'll be like a, be a centerpiece for my creepy gothic dining room. And uh, I must say, it's very helpful to live in a castle because it really lends itself to filming and decorating and just in general having Halloween around the house. I can't imagine how people in uh, one-story houses with lots of windows manage. Well, we have lots of windows too, but our house is made of stone, so the windows are like this, so you can shoot an arrow out and kill people. Normal people don't have those uh, murder holes and things like that in their homes that we have. Uh, they would come inconveniently at a time when uh, unwanted guests or non-guests, solicitors of some sort, come to your door with uh, the word of the one true God. There are many of them. You can trap them in between the portcullises. You can do that to them. You're not allowed to drop large boulders on them or boiling oil or boiling water or tar or hot glue even. You're not allowed to do that. That's illegal. Uh, sometimes you can sometimes get away with trapping them between the portcullises and freaking them out all day. You can say, oh, well, we didn't realize you were stuck there. So sorry. Sometimes the automatic door openers on our portcullises malfunction and people get trapped in between them. But don't worry. It's totally illegal for us to pour boiling oil on you. So 
Lucky for you, you are free to go. But yes, just reminding of the, them of that is uh, rather fun. And it's, you know, I thought I would just bring it up at Halloween. Because it sounds rather gruesome at other times of the year if we mentioned that we could possibly do that. But right around now is a good time to say yes. We do have fully functioning murder holes in the castle, in case you're wondering. The very old part of the castle, not in the Victorian wing. The Victorians were not very keen on uh, dropping boiling substances on unwanted intruders. They would just let the people leave a card, and then they would go. That's how they dealt with them then. The butler would greet them and take their card and send them on their way. We usually do it that way around here, but every once in a while it would be fun. It would be fun to use the castle everything. As it was meant to be used. If we're ever invaded by crazed terrorists, we are prepared here in the country. I say, bring it on, bitches. We're ready for you. We have murder holes, portcullises, and things like that. I would like to see you take us on with all these uh, fortifications. Don't storm the Victorian wing. It's totally unprotected. I don't know what they were thinking. Just ignore that and go for the... But there's the mounts and the tall walls, and you'll be fine. You'll be perfectly good to go. These skulls are not props. These skulls came from the Oubliette, in the dungeons of our castle. We have six of them, but I need seven. So... I'm sending the footmen down into the dungeons to look around and see what they can come up with. It would be most helpful if we had the seven skulls. I can't remember why. There was some certain arrangement I wanted to do with the different skulls. Now, these skulls here are not real. These are just candle holders. We bought them someplace. But uh, if you happen to have a castle, it doesn't hurt to go look around in your basement and you never know what you might find in the way of a Halloween decoration down there, as you can see. We have some more out front. Uh, they're hanging up on the, right around the front, waving at people. Now, uh, they can do quite comical things, too. If only we had kept the broken toilet taken out of the Admiral's suite earlier this year, we could have put a skeleton on a toilet out in front of the duchy. It would have been the most witty and very droll, a very droll thing for us to do, especially if the skeleton was holding a magazine. That's how I would have felt him. And also, we have things like this. Have you seen this? Absolutely creepy. Uh, and that was our family possession of the Dukes. I found it somewhere. Someone wanted at some, uh, like a, carnival type of thing, or a fair, I'm not sure. But, at any rate, uh, there was another one. It was a little doll. Terrifyingly enough. I don't know where it is now. But, yes. So those are some of the spooky things we have. Oh, here is a photo of the gargoyles on our castle. Uh, these would have come from the old part of the castle that you would want to attack. Just look for these fellows and storm the walls there. What else do we have? Oh, here's one of my dolls. I made that one. And, uh, that's a prop, too, in case you were wondering. That did not come from the boat or the oubliette or. No, it's actually foam. Oh. But the Duke is going to learn how to make these things. So he's going to start making some very gruesome Halloween displays for us. What he wants to do is have a, a cable toss victim. He wants to have a guy that's been impaled by a cable anyway. And, and he thinks that would be wonderful. Quite a very scary thing to have at Halloween. I don't know. but He's always wanted to see that. And it's never happened in any of his cable toss events. So he's just going to make one. He's going to use one of his old cabers and just build the, uh, the guy around it. So that would be probably the easy way to go. You can just build half the guy and it's 
sort of mashed together around the caber. He's very, very creative. So we'll see what he comes up with. I would really like him to make, uh, I don't know, some sort of creature. A monster. A very large monster for the front of the castle. I think that would look excellent. Something original. Some monster that no other castle has had before. Something exclusive. I don't know what it would be yet, but it's going to be quite terrifying. And probably huge. We may need to bake it out of old Volkswagens. We may need three or four old Volkswagens. Like the Volkswagen Rabbit would be perfect. You have three or four of those and you mush them together somehow. That would be awesome. You have a, it could be like a giant attack. Oh, what type of animal is very scary? I can't think of one right now. A bull. No, 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 not bull. A goat. Oh, oh, yes, we can make a giant goat that runs around the duchy, terrorizing people. Because you know how people have to see and things like, oh, no, I'm being chased by a giant Satan goat. Ah! It would be wonderful. I'm already imagining the screams and the terrified looks of the people and everyone running around in panic. Oh, it would be wonderful. We really need to make a, an animatronic Satan goat for the duchy for next year. Especially one that can rear up and make a red laser beams coming out of its eyes. That's what we really want. A terrifying goat. I think this is the one I've got to have. How do I look? Straight. Fabulous? Yes. Yes, I'm going to be a peacock for Halloween. Look, I found another very fancy mask with lots of bling on it. I just don't know what I would be with all these diamonds on my face. No, I don't think I'll be wearing the disco shorts anytime soon. Don't plan on that one. Forget it. Not happy. Well, what do you think? Is it me or... A bad or costume idea for the Duchess. How do I look? This has been a Hedroshire Limited Broadcasting Megacorp production.